guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Benchton Podcast. I've got a very special guest with me today. This is Greg Crowder. He's the owner of GSC Surveying. Um, today, in today's podcast, we're going to dive into Benchmark Field Services. Now, y'all may have seen that name around, and we wanted to take a few minutes and chat with Greg about him, GSC Surveying, and how what you do at GSC Surveying has turned into Benchmark Field Services. However, before we get into that, y'all know the drill if you've been around for a little bit. We're going to get the juices flowing. We're going to warm up a little bit. I'm going to ask you some questions. Don't think about it. Don't stress about it. It's just meant to kind of get us going. Here we go. We're going to get benched in with Greg today. All right, Greg, starting at the top. Favorite superhero? Superman. Superman. It has been a Batman and Superman (laughs) heavy superheroes. Nobody wants to do like Daredevil or Punisher. It's (laughs) Ant-Man. That's too new for me. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, if you had a dream car, truck, or SUV, what would it be? Uh, I mean, I like my Toyota Tundra. Tundra? Okay. That's I mean, about, that's, that's as fancy as I get. That's a solid truck. I can <laughs> complain of that one. All right. If you had unlimited money, what would you be doing today, right now? Oh, gosh. Probably learning how to, well, I guess I'd be owner of a fishing charter. Okay. Now I, you like, t- I love fishing. Now are you talking like a big closed lake or out in the ocean? O- ocean. Okay. Both. Well, ocean ocean and inland. Okay. You got a favorite fish you go out for? No. Nah. Just fish. <laughs> I just want to catch something. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right. Um, I always like asking guys this one. If you were at a bar, had a couple beers in you, karaoke night, what are you singing? Oh, God. I'm not singing no matter <laughs> how many beers I have. That's bad. That's very bad. Okay. Um, what is your favorite childhood memory? Oh gosh, that's, that's tough to answer. Um, I guess just playing sports, just being part of a team. Yeah. uh, That's, that's about the biggest thing. Just, just doing sports. Yeah. Boy stuff. Yeah. Boys being boys. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we'll switch it up. So we talked about good childhood. If you could change something from your childhood, what would it be? If anything? Oh, gosh, I'd probably uh, just uh, seeing my kids today, how they are in high school, I would probably be more involved in high school. I'd pr- I was not the most involved high school kid. So if I could do it over, I'd probably do high school over again. That's actually a really solid answer. If I could change one thing, that actually is one thing I would look at doing. Yeah, I mean, being involved, it, that's that's something you don't think about when you're uh, 16, 17 years old. No, not at all. That's that's solid. Yeah. Um, all right, if you could hang out with any cartoon character, who are you hanging out with? Oh, my God. Cartoon character. Uh, what was the, uh, what was it, uh, Rooster? Uh, yes, uh, oh. Oh, my God. I know who you're talking about. I said, I said, I said, boy. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Him. Uh, is it Yosemite? Not Yosemite. No. Uh, I know who you're Fog talking about. Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. The man. <laughs> I say, <said>, boy. <laughs> I like it. All right, you don't take you don't strike me as a guy who uses emojis, but if you did, what do you use the most? Oh my god, emoji. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably the, just the laughing emoji. Yeah, pretty That's, popular one. Yeah. Okay. All right, you got any scars? Tons. Tons. What's your best scar story? Oh gosh. Uh, well, we'll keep it. We'll keep it nice. Okay. Um, when, <laughs> when I was, uh, I guess, probably five years old, I had a scar on my chin here. I was I crawled in bed with my parents and my dad threw me out of bed, hit yep. the hit the side. Yeah, that's okay. my scar. <laughs> Fair enough. I actually have one. I don't know my chin. You can't see it now, but I was I don't know ten and it was the the mall bathroom had a really long hallway and I just started playing baseball. We were just starting to slide and I ran down the hallway and pretended I was going to you know belly slide and I had a graphic T shirt on and it caught <laughs> and my face went right into the tile floor. <laughs> that's fun. Split it wide open. All right. Last question, and I love this question for everybody. What is the best piece of advice that you've ever received, either personally or professionally? Uh, do whatever's required, no matter. Love it. Okay. Fantastic. All right, guys. Hope you got to know Greg a little bit. Um, I know I certainly always learn stuff when I go through these questions. So we're going to jump in and talk a little bit about sort of your history and your background um, and why you started your own company, GSC Surveying, and how that transitioned over. So, um, let's just start off with the basics. How long have you been in the surveying field? 
Uh, well, I started surveying when I w- my dad had a business in Virginia, mm-hmm. and basically, ever since I was nine years old, I've been on job sites, highway projects, because that's what he did his whole life. So since I was nine years old, um, pretty much. Wow. Okay. So child labor laws didn't apply back then. No, they did not. (laughs) They did not. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Did you always have the entrepreneur spirit? Did you always know you wanted to start your own business? Or was that something that just kind of came about from working with your dad? No, I I really, I did not know what direction I wanted to go into. I knew I wanted to be in highway construction. So I, I wanted to learn the construction industry. But somewhere along the lines, I mean, with my dad and him having his own business, uh, I saw uh, when I moved down here, I saw there was a need for someone with my knowledge that I didn't realize I had at the mm-hmm. time, but I realized there was a need for that. And, and I, you know, I, I jumped on it. Yeah. Fantastic. So. And I mean, talk about doing boy stuff. I mean, what, what a dream job for a kid who likes to play sports. You get to be outside all day. I mean, I know some days aren't the best, yeah. but yeah. And to, to develop a team that works together. That's, I mean, it's just, it goes back to sports. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so how long, or when did, I guess better way to phrase it, when did you start GSC surveying? Uh, officially, 1999. Okay. And since you opened up GSC in 1999, how has your business grown? Oh, gosh. So it started out, it was just me and one man in a truck. Okay. <laughs> like every surveying business starts out. Yep. And we only did highway construction stakeout. Uh, we started on a project in Lumberton, North Carolina, and uh, it just kind of grew from that. We had a little niche market. Uh, not many people, uh, not many surveyors would do the highway construction end of it. So we just kind of grew from that. Now, I mean, now we do everything from highway construction to your typical surveying uh, to LIDAR to drones. So it's just kind of grown from there over the years. Gotcha. And to date, what would you say is your biggest or your proudest project that you guys have worked on? Oh, gosh. I mean, all of them are, are good. I mean, it's we've done some really neat ones. We do a lot of massive projects, like right now the I-40 project, the I-95 project. Mm-hmm. But we did uh, Beaufort Bridge. Uh, that uh, was a big bridge. But in Virginia, we've done even bigger bridges. Uh, so the, the bridge projects are really neat to be a part of because mm-hmm. they're just so massive. Yeah. And it's it's amazing what goes into building a bridge. Cool. So if you've watched our show before, you've seen Chuck Harris, who owns Benchmark Tool and Supply. And now I've got you, Greg, the owner of GSC Surveying. How did those two companies become related to each other? So Chuck and I actually started Benchmark Tool and Supply in 2004. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of been the behind the scenes guy when it comes to the uh, the machine control services part. GSC Surveying has been uh, providing the models, providing the control uh, for some of our clients over the years since we started Benchmark in 2004. Um, and now, kind of bridging the gap, uh, we just we're just kind of trying to use that relationship to kind of offer the services in in a correct way. Uh, so that we can just help our clients um, use their machine control more efficiently uh, and uh, basically just use that relationship to kind of uh, grow the business. Gotcha. So field ser- benchmark field services is, is not selling machine control. No, we are not salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, hence the name field services, you're just out there in the field providing that extra touch, I guess, if you will. Correct. Machine control has become a necessity for contractors to, to uh, do the jobs profitable. And uh, we're just kind of providing that in between from the actual field surveying uh, and the machine control, we're providing the need uh, that the piece that they need to make it all kind of work together. Gotcha. So traditionally, when you guys would provide a construction company with the survey, they would then have to go out to a third party then to get that model built, correct? Correct. And so that was the piece, I believe you told me, that was missing from the construction companies. They're having to go out to a third party company who may not understand the survey or aren't familiar with it, and you guys wanted to fill that gap. Can you just explain that a little bit better? Right. So at Benchmark Tool and Supply, the clients that they sell machine control to, we recognize the need, being on the site, we recognize the need that they needed. They needed... 3D models. They needed control for localization. They needed it set up correctly. They also needed documentation for uh, 
uh, how much dirt have they moved, volumetrics and stuff like that. So we recognized a need, um, you know, to or a, 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 a kind of a niche thing. Hey, we can offer this services because we're already doing it as a surveying construction surveying company. Mm-hmm. So let's just add this to our uh, portfolio. And Benchmark Field Services was then created kind of as a play off of Benchmark Tool Supplies name. I think you guys actually sent me over as we were planning for this um, a little, I think you guys called it a roadmap to success where you document sort of the start of the process after surveying has been done up through the final as built. So I wanted to take a few minutes and run through this. This is actually really cool what you guys sent us. So we're going to take out the surveying piece because that's already been established. So what Benchmark right. Field Services does and what you guys say you start with is a site model or a takeoff. So just run me through what that is and why you guys are good at what you do. Well, um, like for the 3D model part of it, uh, I mean, it's basically taking a set of plans and three-dimensionalizing it, three-dimensionalizing it in CAD mm-hmm. and uh, converting it over to TopCon software so that the contractor can use the machine control to build the project uh, uh, without a lot of stakes on the ground, per se. So the first step you guys have here in your roadmap to success is building a site model. Why is it so important that it stays with a company that's familiar to a project? Well, our expertise at GSC Surveying is construction stakeout. Mm-hmm. So to make uh, with, with those expertise, uh, um, just taking the set of plans that we have and making it three-dimensional, it's, it, it kind of comes natural because you can, you, you're looking at the plans – and you're out in the field, you can see the project. You can see what needs to be built in the field. So now we're just taking those plans, and you can see it on the computer. You, you see the intent of the in- engineer, mm-hmm. and you can take that and three-dimensionalize it and put it in a format for machine control that the contractor can essentially build the whole job stakeless. Perfect. Okay. Um, and next thing you guys got here is setting control and localizing. And I know you just said, I mean, being able to visualize the plan, visualize the project, just walk me through again. You've got digital plans. Now you need to go to the job site. Right. So, again, Benchmark Field Services recognized, we, we recognized that a contractor, a lot of the issues that they were having was, uh, well, they would call us and say something's not right. So we would go out and check it, and one of the issues would be the model. Okay, the model wasn't correct. Easy fix. Mm-hmm. The control is not correct. Well, that uh, can be an easy fix, but it can also be a, ma- a major disaster. So who would typically set control? So control has to be set by a licensed land surveyor, okay. uh, according to the, the board rules. But uh, control is something that is that is the basis of uh, a, a machine control system. Mm-hmm. You have to have good control for everything in the model to be correct. Just like if you were staking a job, if your control is not good, the stakes you put on the ground is not good. So uh, to... To the very first step in a project is the project has to be, you have to run control for the project, make sure it ties to the property, um, and then make sure it's relative to the model that you're making. Okay. So that's a very important piece. So we recognize that contractors, that's something that they, they don't do, they don't want to do. Why would they? They, mm-hmm. they concentrate on moving dirt. Let us concentrate on setting control and localizing your project. Gotcha. As the survey company who's been out there, Again, just, I know I'm going to keep saying it and I'm keep reiterating, but you guys have been to the physical project. So Correct. you're very familiar with that area. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So now we get to the fun part, right? You've been out there, you've surveyed it, you have built a model, which is good. No issues there. You guys have been to the site and you set control and you localized it. Now comes the fun part. Now you guys can go out there and make sure that the machines are where they're supposed to be. How do you guys go through, or how do you guys go about verifying that machine is set up correctly? Well, so, I mean, it's basically, if the machine's been calibrated, which we, Benchmark Field Services will do, or Benchmark Tool and Supply, uh, we basically, if the contractor wants us to check his blade, we'll check his blade. Um, but also, there are certain things where you have to set stakes, um, and you're verifying their GPS. We'll set them points out there that they can check their GPS to, mm-hmm. um, you know, just verify and grade whatever whatever they need. But uh, we always recommend that a contractor has a stake on d- in separate sections of the project so that every day, if they're working in that section of the project, go set your GPS on it, check it. 
go set your blade near it. Find something to, mm-hmm. to uh, check to to make sure that you're relative to that control every day. Okay. Let's move on um, from the setting control on to the machine verification. So when it gets to this point in the roadmap, and again, the roadmap is something you guys offer throughout the entire job process. So if they've had you guys build a model, they've had you guys set control, how are you guys able to verify that the model you built and the control you guys have set is working and is in conjunction with that machine? So if we're on the site, if we are actually doing surveying on the site, um, we can verify it by other stakes that we set. Uh, A lot of projects we'll build a model for, we'll set the control uh, and localize the project for the contractor and provide them with all that information. But the verification part would come either with their surveyor, which is a totally different entity. That, that's a better, even a better verification. Mm-hmm. But also we'll set checkpoints throughout the site so that the contractor can take his, uh, his rover unit over to that point, check it at different locations of the project. Or if he wants to check his blade, have a place where he can always go over, check his blade, check it with the rover. Uh, but to verify uh, that it's relative from day one to day finished. Day, <laughs> day that, finished, I like that. Whatever day that is. <laughs> day finished. <laughs> I'm going to start using that. Um, okay, perfect. So the next step on your roadmap to success is support. Obviously, support in any industry is important. What do you guys do that sets your support apart from other people? And why is it so important that you guys are able to support what you guys have done for our customers? Well, to me, the biggest support that we, uh, the, the biggest thing that differentiates us from other, um, I guess, um, modelers or whatever, uh, surveyors, whatever, the biggest thing that differentiates us is that we are on, we are construction workers. We are construction surveyors. We are on the job. We see every process of the project being built. So we know it firsthand from the old school way to now the machine control way, the new school way, whatever. So that, I think that sets us apart, and we can recognize things in the field ahead of time um, that, you know, something's not looking right. So if we're on the site, it, 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 we can recognize things. But looking at a model, when you make the model, mm-hmm. having the experience that we have in the field, we can also recognize things with the plan saying, this isn't going to work Get with the engineer and say, listen, what was your intent here? And then hopefully correct that, which in the end saves everybody money, engineer, surveyor, contractor. It makes it makes it, the process a lot more efficient. Sure, and you guys are local here, so if there is an issue, you're not in a computer room 5,000 miles away or 2,000 miles away. Right, North Carolina and Virginia, we can pretty much handle all of it. Perfect, okay. So I think the next step is something that a lot of people don't think about or they neglect, and that's, actual job site progression. We all know that job sites progress, but nobody really, I don't want to say nobody cares, but really, I mean, as long as the job's getting done, right, then the job's getting done. So why is job progression on here and why is it so important? So job progression, if I'm an owner, if I'm paying you to do a job for me, I want to know what's going on. Absolutely. Or if I'm a contractor doing the job, but I'm the guy in the office, the project manager, it's not on the in the field as much as the superintendent or foreman, whatever. I want to know what's going on. So job progression, uh, or call it documentation, mm-hmm. of each stage. So uh, I'm a, what you're referring to, I'm assuming, is the drone work that we do. Yep. Um, and that is uh, the, the newer technology that people are using in surveyors. For, uh, for this surveying company, it's been the best thing ever. Every surveying company should have a drone in their workflow. But... Uh, for us on the job sites, if you fly a job in the beginning, once the trees are cleared, you can fly it. You have an existing ground, so that's step one. Yep. Step two is to start putting erosion control um, uh, measures. You can fly it again. You can fly it every day if you want to. It's a little overkill, but you can fly it as much as you want to. So at each process, at each uh, step of the project, you fly it. You have documentation of what's been done. Uh, Not only do you have documentation of silt fence, tree fence, uh, clearing limits to make sure they're correct, Mm -hmm. you also have uh, documentation of how much dirt was removed to this date from the beginning. Um, That's the biggest thing, uh, the biggest advancement, in my opinion, in Mm -hmm. surveying since GPS. It's just, it's amazing 
the amount of information you can collect and what you can do with that information. So I want to go back a little bit because everybody hears drones and they think it's a toy. I, I can't get anything out of that. What are you guys flying and what has been the biggest process change for you guys using those drones to collect that data? Well, it's, uh, it answers a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. If you send a crew out in the field to collect data uh, and they, when you see a bunch of points on a computer screen, you're like, oh, geez, what is this? I mean, what did they mean? Or they missed a point. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a picture. Picture's worth a thousand words. It's, it is. So you can understand what, uh, what he was trying to collect when he was in the field. On a construction site, Again, it's, it's that documentation that's there. You can use it to figure volumes of dirt moved. You can figure, um, you know, how much curb was laid. So it, it's just a, uh, it's a backup. It's a, uh, hey, we can go out and stake this now because they're ready. Or uh, you can verify it to the model. Hey, we need about 10 feet of dirt here before we ask for the pipe, mm -hmm. uh, pipe to be staked. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can use it for. Cool. And what are you guys flying? We're using the uh, M300 with uh, P1 uh, and the L1. Okay. And for those of you that don't know, the P1 is just a standard RGB camera, and the L1 is their new LiDAR system. What has been your experience using LiDAR, and how are you guys using it currently? With with drones and photogrammetry, it's great because you're getting a picture. A picture's worth a thousand words. But now we can go into a job site that hasn't been cleared yet, we can fly it with LIDAR and actually provide the contractor with an existing ground check to the design, which is a, you know, which is a big item because when they designed the job, did they use accurate data? Was it a hand survey? Was it a, uh, you know, LIDAR survey from years ago? Has it changed? Whatever. But we can go in and fly it before they clear the job, and it just gives them that information up front a lot more uh, before they even knock the first tree down. Which can be a huge advantage in, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but even bidding a project. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if they want to use it for bid, we could do that too. Yeah. Are you guys using LiDAR after the fact or just that first flight? Well, uh, LiDAR, pre pretty much you're using LiDAR just in uh, vegetative areas, like with a lot of trees before it's been cleared. Okay. Um, the, the P1 system or the photogrammetry system we use, uh, it, 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 it in open areas, it's the best. I mean, it's it's it's... It's pretty good. Okay. Very good, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, so I know a lot of people think that, hey, I've got a drone. I can throw it in the air. I can take some pictures, throw it into a photogrammetry program, and I've got a survey. That is absolutely not the case. Why is that not the case? And what are you guys doing different to make sure your aerial photographs are survey grade? Yeah, so um, you can go up and take pictures and stuff like that. It, 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 yes, it's three-dimensional, but the thing that makes it survey grade is it comes down to the ground control. There's, there's certain criteria that you have to meet. Uh, there's certain checkpoints that you need to uh, provide. And, and us being surveyors, we're already set in control. We're already, we know how to survey, so you throw the drone up in the air, tie it to the ground control points, and that makes it survey grade. It's, it's very... Uh, it's amazing the accuracy of a drone flying 300 feet in the air. What is the accuracy you guys are getting? Uh, d just depends on what you're looking for. I mean, it, it, anywhere from a tenth or, I mean, below. And you're, Vertical and horizontal. Okay. And you're flying at not 20 or 30 feet. You're flying at? Two, 270, 300 feet. Yeah. Okay. So you're able to cover a large amount of area yeah. in a very short amount of time. Correct. And you're getting more information you can ever collect. You're getting a better representation of what's there on the ground. So, you know, you're not sending Bob out there for, all right, Bob, that's, that's Bob, by the way. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> so you're not sending him walking for weeks where what you can collect in an know, hour. An hour. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So you guys have built the model. You have been out and you've set control. You have gone out and you've verified the machine. You have provided all the support that you could along the way. You have taken job site progression photos via drone. Job site's done. The last step you guys have here is a final as-built flight. Why do I use that? Uh, it's, it's a final uh, visual of what's been built. And you can take that if you've done. So we've done the model, mm -hmm. and now we have the final. You can take the final flight, the pictures, and the three-dimensional, and you can marry it all together, and you can see, okay, where how, how accurately was this built? So you, you have... Uh, you have a before the job was even started, 
and you compare it to the final flight, and that is exactly what changed. It were, were there changes? Hey, this area changed. Well, we had a change order there. Well, that's okay. That's the, you, you can verify exactly what was built. So you can almost use it as maybe a learning opportunity for the next job site. You could also probably use it for marketing piece. If you want to show off what you guys can do, you can take the before and after. Absolutely. The, and the, the whole job progression thing, flying the project throughout sites, it's a great uh, marketing tool for saying, hey, this is what we did. If I'm a contractor and I'm building this shopping center, I can show it from day one to day finish, as we've yeah. done before. <laughs> yep. um, and it's you can show each month what went on. Uh, so this is a lot of steps you guys do. And I, we've may have covered it, but I want to ask the question directly. Why is it so important that one company can provide all these services to a contractor? If someone's just making a model, if you have someone that knows CAD and they can they can take a set of plans and put it in CAD and make a you know make a nice model for them, that's one thing. That's great. Yes, I have a model, but is that model correct? Is it tied properly to the project? Um, it's uh, to me, uh, you need to do it. You need to have someone on site that can verify all that. Uh, set the control, localize the project. Number one, that's the number one piece that's that's critical mm-hmm. in the start of a project. The model, okay. Now we're verifying that the model is tied to control, mm-hmm. tied to the site. Everything is going to be good on that end. And then there's just the progression part of it, the documentation part of it. Everything is tied to that original control that was originally set by a surveyor. And things just go better yeah. throughout the entire process. Because if the project is not set up right in the beginning, your disasters will happen, and we have seen them. Which is very unfortunate because that causes downtime, and downtime is money. Yes, lots. So I'm a contractor. I, I can hire somebody to do all this, can I? Sure. How much is it going to cost me? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the size of the job. Yeah, and, and I mean – do you keep somebody on who can do all this on staff the entire time, or are they just a contractor on per job? I mean, I, I legitimately don't know. I mean, what would a company, what would it cost a company to do all this all the time? Uh, I mean, you would have to hire, you would have to have a surveyor, a licensed surveyor to do the control and the uh, and contouring of the land. I mean, you pretty much have to have a PLS on staff, an engineer on staff. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to have a couple people do this. Yeah. That's the benefit of contracting you guys out, right? This is what you guys do full time. You've got them on staff already. Um, the biggest thing about um, hiring us to do this uh, work is the contractor can concentrate on what he does best. Let us concentrate on what we do best, and that takes the worry away from the from the project. Yeah, less downtime equals yeah. more pro- projects being done more quickly, which allows you to move on to the next one. Absolutely, awesome. So I always end with the same question. If there's one piece of advice or a nugget of information that you would like to share with our listeners about why your services are so important or so valuable, and again, we may have already answered this, but I like asking directly, what is that piece of information, that nugget, and why you guys so important? Well, yeah, we did touch on it. Uh, Stick with your expertise. Uh, If you're a contractor that moves dirt, move dirt. If you're a contractor that lays pipe, lay pipe. Uh, If you're a contractor trying to do surveying, don't do it. Leave it up to the surveyor. Let the surveyor do the things that they do best. Again, it goes back to the team thing. Mm-hmm. On a project, you, yes, you have tons of subs. You have one contractor. Uh, everybody's working as a team, and in the end, everybody is uh, profitable in the end, which is the goal. Awesome. Greg, I really appreciate your time. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking kind of for clarifications on what Benchmark Field Services does. I hope that this kind of helps explain what Benchmarks Field Services does and why, kind of like Greg said, doing what you do best is so important. So with that, Greg, thank you so much for stopping by. I know you're a busy man, so I certainly appreciate the time. Thank you. Enjoyed Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm glad. It wasn't terrible, was it? <laughs> no. I'm sweating <laughs> like a pig over here, but it's all good. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Certainly appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, check back for more. we got a lot of new podcasts coming out. Yeah, I certainly appreciate y'all watching. Have a great day.